Lord, please bring that destruction. I'm just praying. Did I stay strong to see that recompense? Putting on the whole armor of God. The Bible's my defense. So I direct my thoughts to right because I'm his chosen people. And please believe he coming back to save us out of Sit Egypt. Tired of being so tired. Lord knows what we've been through. Sick and slave, we gotta serve a heathen. Y'all bear witness, cause you in it too. Lord, don't leave, we destitute. Pray for peace, negate the truth. Ass back is with a twist of ignorance. We earn the decision, y'all know it's true. Got an extra doing obstacle told us to. Take your pick, broke it too. Forgot these laws got sold too. A bunch of dingy hippies with no shoes. Real brute beast, no soul to lose. Can't complain. No excuse. Sick and tired and we need a healing. Please hear the prayer of your toast. Tired of the struggle. Tired of the beat. Tired of the pressure. Tired of the pressure. I'm calling. Oh, I pray. God, did you hear me? Could you please send me a blessing? No, I am in need of a healing. I said I'm tired of the struggle. Tired of the beat. Tired of the pressure. I pray. God, did you hear me? Could you bless her? I'm calling. Oh, I pray. God, did you hear me? Could you please send me a blessing? Do the rhyme in 2865. I'm tired trying to cast behind. So I was a mind to die. Now live again in your kingdom. All I know to do in struggles. Hustle the Lord's my strength. My muscle, second job, verse six. I love you. Wanna see you wreck a piss out. Double so rock 36. My prayer, watch me thoroughly. Mine and Nick with these songs. 109 sounds. Failure, pray you hear me. Clear me when the road gets weary. Steer me as I strive. Not draw. Near me, most high in Christ God. You hear me? I said I'm tired of struggle. I'm calling, oh, I pray, God, that you hear me. Could you please send me a blessing? Oh, I'm in need of a healing. I said, I'm tired of the struggle. I'm tired of the beat. I'm tired of the person. I pray, God, that you hear me. Could you bless her? I'm calling, oh, I pray, God, that you hear me. Could you please send me a blessing? Oh, I'm in need of a healing. I repented then for my past life, but that past life seemed like last night. Be reminded me of that old life, all empty in that lamp light. I need some spiritual healing. I need that comforting feeling. I need that time when I'm away from home. They come and they come and they need me. Never mistreating me. When I'm feeling defeated, I just want to feel native. They know what to say when I need it. I never hold anger, I let it go. I never cock it and let it blow. Tears in my eyes, I let them flow. Lord in heaven, he only knows. Love of this world, I never can miss me with that. Take one of the chin and I bounce back. That's how it is, I'm like that.
I sense the distance between you and me. Oh, look what I've done to you. Oh, can you ever forgive me? Cause me, I feel pain in my heart, you know. Me really feel what I don't. Be far apart, you know. And I can't stand the distance. Pain in my heart, you know. Me really feel what I don't. Be far apart, you know. And I can't stand the distance. Okay, now I'm trying. I'm trying to be faithful, no more lying. No more disrespect, no fighting. And I can't take I away to silence. Too big to apologize. I know I really made you mad. See it in your eyes. Realize everything we built me a jeopardize. I realize I was being uncivilized. Cause me, I feel pain in my heart, you know. Me really feel what I don't. We far apart, you know. And I can't stand the distance. Pain in my heart, you know. Me really feel what I don't. We far apart, you know. And I can't stand the distance. We don't want no more drama. Fresh start, we can do things I wanna. And I said I was gonna change, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna change, oh yeah. I change all my ways, and you see that. I could be a better man, believe that. I sense the distance between you and me. Oh, look what I've done to you. Oh, can you ever forgive me? Cause me, I feel pain in my heart, you know. Me really feel what I don't. We far apart, you know. And I can't stand the distance. Pain in my heart, you know. Me really feel what I don't. We far apart, you know. And I can't stand the distance. Can you stop thinking about you. Could I never leave your side? I don't want to. I don't want to. They could never understand what we've been through. When you're by my side, I will still brand new. No delay. I'ma stay by your side. I'm in a stray. Tell them he didn't wait if he go away. Don't like when me and you okay. When I break up, there's no way. Action man, me no two chat. Me no two chat, no. Me no talk how much me love me. Prove that. I'm gonna prove. And I ain't gonna say what you wanna hear. Has lip service, me don't do that. I know, no, no. I sense the distance between you and me, you and me. Oh, look what I've done to you. Oh, can you ever forgive me? Cause me, I feel pain in my heart, you know. You really feel what I don't. Far apart, you know, and I can't stand the distance. Pain in my heart, you know. Me really feel what I don't. We far apart, you know, and I can't stand the distance.
changes. Possession is spoiled. You are better than one. Better than I'm glad I found my day one. I found my day I'm glad I found my day one. Submitting myself to you is no issue. Righteousness is what you're about. You go to your house, oh. I want to be the real. This place above rupees. I hope you found her.
go. Yeah. Not the same, no, no, no. Got the rain, had to grow. Don't chase the fame anymore. Don't being lame anymore. Don't fornicate anymore. No doing drugs anymore. Don't feel the pain anymore. There's so much more in store. Bishop on deck. Salute down, face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Holy Father, we're giving you glory and honor, Lord. Thank you for the Feast of Tabernacle. Thank you for your Sabbath. You say it's between us and thee. Father, have mercy upon us and also have compassion upon that, upon that children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look out for us, Lord. Be in a shield to us. Send your angels to guide us, to protect us throughout our ways. As we travel through this journey, Father, we face in mad evil. Then we know through your words and through your, through your knowledge, we'll be able to defend all type of evil. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, our Father, we're in heaven, honor be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. As it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Give us his day our daily bread. And forgive us for our sin. Forgive our sins against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from all evil. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, bless our food and our drink. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, heal the sick that is among us. Quickly and speedily. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, bless us, Lord. Bless our UIC. Uh, and then continue to send your angels to work among us. As we travel throughout this earth, bringing this gospel. Then we pray that, Lord, you continue with us. Then you have mercy upon us and also compassion to all the nation of Israel. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, let the whole congregation say hallelujah. 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 We also pray for our bishop. We also pray for our food and drink. In Christ we pray, we ask, amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient. Saints, sons of God, hand salute. Most high Christ bless. Salute down. Face sisters. To the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Most high Brothers, bring the rest of the mics. Bring the rest of the mics. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on.
Yeah, uh, yeah, all praise to the most high, man. We did we did have Feast of Tabernacle. We've been successful on that. Give, uh, clap your hand for yourself. <laughs> and we also thank the Lord, man, to bring the unity back that we, did, we once did not have captive. And, but now we do have the unity. Let's keep the unity between us. Let's keep the love going. Let's keep the compassion between us. Then control your thoughts. Because it's to your thoughts you're going to make st stupid uh, decision. So learn how to control your thoughts. Knowing that this is a family trying to build. When you know that, this is the, this is the base. The base of a family. We're going to go through problems. We're going to go to whatever we're going through. But always remember, this is a family. Don't get in your emotion and your feeling and destroy what uh, what God trying to build in you. Uh, we see a, a few a few brothers here, upwards to the most side. Then uh, I guess we get ready for the next feast. White cap, Solomon. What's going on, bro? Yep. So uh, feast of that. Uh, what is that? Feast of dedication is next. Okay. November. All right, man. Now your brothers get ready. We also want to ask God, the Lord, for mercy upon the souls of our brothers and sisters who passed. All right. There was um, Sister Yohana, Yohana. brother, I mean, so, uh, Soldier Matthew. And uh, there was two, two more, two more, two more, two more. Brother in Dallas, whose name I forgot at the yes. second. He had a, a cancer. Yeah. Um, then, then Lord's will, we will see this. Uh, we will see our sister again. We'll see this young brother. Oh, and yes. Also that brother in Dallas who got cancer. We definitely will see all of them again. Oh, we see them. That's what the scripture's saying. We got to believe that thing. We must believe that thing. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all saw. How many of y'all saw the movie uh, Antebellum? Raise your hand. Oh, that was a good, good, good. That was a good one right there. That was a good one. There was some at the beginning. The wording, the wording was uh, the past is never dead. It's not even the past. And when you look it up, it states um, even if an event is in the past, it can still affect and influence the present and the future. You cannot ignore your past. No more than you can ignore your memories. And that's something we got to really consider and take to heart. Okay? You can never, you can't ignore your past. You cannot ignore your past. No more than you can ignore your memories. Because you're always going to have your memories with you. And that's how your past, although our people want to forget their past, try to forget their past. You cannot forget it. Give, who's reading for me? Let's sort of open up with uh, Ecclesiastes. Chapter 3 and verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 15. So, today's lesson is going to deal with our past. Our past and the, the, where we all come from. How Cain does return as Esau. Read that. That which has been is now. And that which is to Wait, be... Wait, read that again. We read that many times, but we let it slip by us. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 15. That which has been is now. That which has been is now. That's a heavy statement right there. Many times we'll read on. No, oh, you gotta, you got to meditate on that thing and chew the cut. That which has been, meaning in the past, is now. It's like, wow. The Lord is saying a whole lot. Through Solomon, that one statement right there. We're going to get into it a little later, but read it again. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And that which is to be hath already been. Wow. Hmm. See, that went over, that goes over to Christian's head. The apologetics now is sitting at home right now, saying, well, what is, where is it going with that? What does that mean? It means exactly what it said. And that which is to be hath already been. Go ahead. And God requireth 
that which is past. And God requires that which is past. That's why there's going to be a final and ultimate judgment day. Could you get many a Christian that'll ask questions like, how is God going to judge a baby when a baby passed when it was, let's say, stillborn? It may have been stillborn. Oh, read it again for the Christian who doesn't understand the power of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 15. That which has been is now. Mm -hmm. And that which is to be hath already been. And God requires that which is past. That's some heavy stuff right there. You hear that, D? You got, you got, you got what that's saying? Sure. Everybody think they knew. Oh, I'm new on this planet. Mm, no, you're not. No, you're not. I know the Christians be telling you, no, it's, it, what's that in the Hebrews? is required unto men once to die. And then the judge, yeah, that body you got dies once. I'm going to say it again. That body you got dies once, and then you get judged, and then you come back. Now, I know that's a hard saying. It's a hard saying. Let's go to chapter 1 of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. I'm, I'm going to try and go a little slow. I've got the message. I go too fast. All right, we're going to start at verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 4. One generation passeth away. One generation passeth away. Go ahead. And another generation cometh. And then another generation comes. Go ahead. But the earth abideth forever. But the earth abideth forever. So that's another thing in that verse there. People think the world's going to be destroyed. The Bible, God says the earth abides forever. There's not going to be no destruction of the planet Earth. It abides forever. Come on. Verse 5. The sun also arises. So now, Solomon's explaining something heavy to us. He talks about generations of mankind on Earth. One generation passes away, and then another generation comes. And the Earth abides forever. Then he says, the sun also. So now he uses the word also to compare the sun rising and going down to generations coming and going. Read it again, verse 5. The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. So now he says, just as a generation comes and goes, he said, the sun, let's think about that a second. It'll rise in the east, and it will set in the west, and then it comes back to the east again. Go ahead. Verse 6. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuit. So now notice, he went from comparing generations of men to the sun rising and going down and coming back again. Now he compares them two things to the wind. The wind goes toward the south and turns about unto the north. It whirleth about continually. Operative word we want, continually. And the wind returneth again according to his circuits, meaning it goes back from the beginning, where it came, from the south. And that's a heavy, that right there is more what he's, he's explaining not only generations of man, but he's also explaining how the wind moves about. Go ahead. Verse 7. Now he's going to give you another example. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Notice what he says. All the rivers run into the sea, Yet the sea is not full. Go ahead. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. So notice, all the rivers go to the sea, but the sea never over overflows with water. And he says, uh, unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. So the rivers go into the sea and then go back. So Solomon is comparing generations of men to the sun going down. Rising and going down to, to what? To the wind which twirls about continually. Now he explains the rivers. Now notice at the bottom of verse 4, he talks about the earth abides forever. Now I wanted to stress on that point about the earth because notice he, then when he gets to verse 7 about the rivers, all the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, Thither they return again. He's still talking about generations of men on the earth. Yet the earth is never overpopulated, as Esau likes to say. Read on. Verse 8. 
all things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. Go ahead. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. So now he's going, the thing that hath been, because somebody might get simple. Well, let's read the whole verse first before I say something. Go ahead. Verse 9. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. See, somebody might say, but wait a minute. Airplanes is new. Satellites is new. Cell phones, this ain't talking about satellites or cell phones. The thing that has been goes right back to verse 4. Can you read verse 4 for us again? Yes, sir. Verse 4. One generation passes away, and another generation cometh. But the earth abideth forever. So now he's, he's talking about generations of mankind on the planet. He compares mankind to the sun arising and going down, hastening into its place again. Then, in case you didn't understand that, he compares mankind to the wind coming and going, whirling about continually from the south to the north. And if you didn't understand that, now he says, let me give you another example with the rivers which run to the sea, yet the sea's never overflowed, and the waters go right back to the rivers again. Then he says, that might be too hard for you too. Let me give you another example. He says, the thing hath been, talking about spirits of man, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, okay? And that which is done, meaning the things that spirits that mankind does on the earth, is that which shall be done. For example, sinning or keeping God's commandments. That's always from the beginning, from the time of Adam and Eve. That's what it was about. Obedience or disobedience to what God says. That's what verse 9 is going into. The thing that has been talking about spirits is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done, meaning whether you're going to do the commandments or not do them. And there is no new thing under the sun. Read. Verse 10. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new. See, we hear a baby cry like we hear now. Say, see, this is a new baby. But when you, from verse 4 again, he's saying, no, 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 no. It's not new. Read on. It hath been already of old time, which was before us. You see that? Read verse 10 one more again. Verse 7? Verse 10. Verse 10. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new. It hath been already of old time, which was before us. So verse 10. He said, I'm going to speak a little plainer now. I know some of you are slow. He says, is there anything whereof it may be said? See, this is new. It has been already of old time, which was before us. We are our past. That's why there's going to be a final and ultimate judgment. How can you judge a baby that only lived for like what? Three days. Or you might think that baby only lived for three. No, that spirit didn't live just for three days. That spirit was here before. This is what Solomon is explaining. Read on. Verse 11, there is no remembrance of former things. Right. People go, oh, I, deja vu. I feel like I met you or I feel like I've been in this place before. I can't remember. I, I, it's just I got a feeling. That's where that comes from. It says there is no remembrance of former things. Go ahead. Read it again. Verse 11. There is no remembrance of former things. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. You see that? It says, and neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall, those that shall come after. He's telling you, he's, remember, he's talking about from verse 4, generations of mankind. That's what he's talking about, generations on the planet. And you don't remember. All right, now watch this. In case you're slow, I'm going to give you a few examples. Give me John chapter 1. Now, I know some of you that just, just got out to Christian church, you're not going to get it because you've been indoctrinated with uh, white supremacy. So your mind is already blocked. You understand science, white man's science, but the spiritual workers of God, you are clueless to. Now, I know. Some of, them, some of y'all might be confused, but some of y'all are going to be edified. John 1, 19. John chapter 1, verse 19. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests... Now, who are we talking about? John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Read it again. And this is the record of John. 
when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. So he said, I'm not the anointed. I am not the Messiah. That's Christ. The word Christ literally means in English, anointed. I am not the anointed. Go ahead. Verse 21. And they asked him, what then? Art thou Elias? Are you Elijah? Elias is Elijah. Are you Elijah? Go ahead. And he saith, I am not. Why would they ask him that? Why? You got to first, if you don't understand nothing spiritual about the Bible, you got to examine the questions. These are learned scholars, scholars or uh, doctors of the law. These are scribes and Pharisees. Are you Elijah? But wait a minute. Elijah was hundreds of years ago. Why would you ask a question like that? Read it again. Verse 21. And they asked him, what then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, no. He said, no. Now that was verse 21. Read on down to 23. Go ahead. Verse 22. Then said they unto him, who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that, that, uh, that we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. As said the prophet Isaiah. That's Isaiah's is Isaiah. Now watch this, Matthew eleven thirteen. 13. Now some of y'all are going to get mad. The apologetics right now online, pissed off. Matthew, Matthew 11, 13 and 14. Matthew chapter 11, verse 13. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Now this is Christ speaking. Christ is speaking to the 12. Go ahead. And if you will receive it. And if you will believe it, if you will accept what I'm about to say, read. This is Elias, which was for to come. He says this is Elijah, which was for to come, which was prophesied to come. Hmm. So Christ just verified something that science and society today says does not exist. Christ is verifying something that Christianity says does not exist. The regeneration of the soul. Okay, the regeneration of peoples on the planet. Read it again. Read from 13 again. Matthew chapter 11 verse 13. For all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. And if you will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. This is Elijah. Which was for to come, which was prophesied to come. So, so, wait a minute, why would Christ say that? That's not what my pastor taught me. Well, that's why Christ said you must be born again. You got to forget everything we learned here in this oppressive system. We got to forget everything we've been taught by society and be truly born again. Matthew 17, 10, please. Matthew chapter 17, verse 10. And his, his, and his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? See that? So now they're asking him a question. Why then say the scribes that Elijah must first come? Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. Now that's a heavy thing right there. Notice he's, in verse 11 he's saying future tense. Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. But watch this. Verse 12. But I say unto you. Stop. But I'm going to say something right now. My, what I just said might have been a little hard for you to grasp. So let me explain something in this time. Go ahead. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. He came already. Elijah came already. Go ahead. And they knew him not. And nobody knew it was him. Go ahead. But have done unto him whatsoever they listed. They did to him whatsoever they wanted to. Go ahead. Likewise shall also the son of man suffer of them. I'm going to suffer the same way Elijah suffered. Hmm? Now the disciples, you got to imagine. What you talking about, Willis? Go ahead. Verse 13. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Now they understood regarding Elijah was John. That even this goes over Christianity's head. They're like, what? Mm, mm, mm. Christ is Messiah wrong. The Son of God is wrong. Pastor T D is right. Really? 
So you put your pastor over the son of God. Okay, then you stay over there. This is not for you. So watch this. Matthew 24, verse 34. Matthew chapter 24, verse 34. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Mm, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's jump up so we can get a grasp on what he's talking about. Start up at verse um, 29. Verse 29. Watch this. Immediately after the tribulation of those days mm -hmm. shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from the heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now jump down to verse 34. Verse 34. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. That generation has come and gone. So you got to imagine Christ speaking to all the people around him. And they're like, so you're coming back in this. So remember this, remember the confusion. A lot of people watch this. Hold this. Hold this. We're coming right back. Get Matthew 11 and 5. Let me show you something. Start at 1 and go down to 5. Watch this. Matthew chapter 11, verse 1. And it came to pass, when Jesus has made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? See that? Are you he that should come? Are you the Messiah? Well, you got to ask yourself, remember, John saw Christ. The Lord told John, he who you see the dove descend... That's must the son. John saw the spirit of God descend on Christ. Now John is asking, hey, hey, go ask, is he the one? Why? Why do you ask that? Because wait, where was John? He was in prison. And the mindset was deliverance was at that time in that generation. Read that again. Verse 3. And said unto him, art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered and said unto him, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Here come, watch this. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. You're going to ask the question, well, what do you mean by that verse 6? Blessed is he that is not offended. It would, people like John himself thought Christ was coming to deliver them then. But that was not Christ's mission to deliver the people physically at that time. Watch this. Look at Acts 1, verse 6. And we're going to come back to Matthew. I'm not going to leave you hanging. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Read. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons mm. which the Father had put in his own power. See but, that? Was but, that it? Was that it? Uh, I'm not looking at it. Was that the whole verse? Uh, that's for the end of verse 7. Yes, okay, sir. so the disciples also said, are you going to give us the kingdom now? Is this the time now? Christ is like, no. Only the Father knows when, but I, it ain't yet. Now watch this, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. You got to see the misconception that some of our forefathers had during that uh, time of Christ. Second Thessalonians chapter two, and I believe we started one. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse one. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning, I'm talking about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the second coming. Go ahead. And by our gathering together unto Him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled. Neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Don't let nobody deceive you as that the day of Christ is at hand. Meaning, don't let nobody deceive you that the second coming is now in this generation. That's what he's saying. Read. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. 
For that day shall not come. I mean, what day? The second coming of the Lord. That day shall not come. Go ahead. Except there come a falling away first. The 12 tribes of Israel must fall. The 12 tribes of Israel must fall and go into captivity. All 12 didn't fall yet. Remember, during this time, you had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi still in the land. Go ahead. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who is oppose- eight. See that? And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The man of sin must be revealed. So two things have to happen before Christ come back. All 12 tribes of Israel must go into captivity. And then the man of sin must be revealed. Who the devil is must be revealed in the earth. He said, then the Lord is going to return. So now let's go on back to Matthew 24. Verse 34. Uh, Started... Where was we before? Start at 29. Yes, sir. And read down. Matthew chapter 24, verse 39. Immediately after the tribulation of... 29, 29. 29. Right. Matthew 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. There's going to be war on the earth. That's what it means. The powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Read. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. All the 12 tribes are going to mourn when we see the return of the Lord. Read. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Go ahead. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall, to, and they shall gather together his elect. From the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Read. Verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Meaning what? The tribulation of the Israelites? You're going to see war upon the earth, and then you're going to see the sign of the coming of the Son of Man. Now watch the next verse. Verse 34. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That generation is dead and gone. That's why you got to look at it with your spiritual eyes. You got to be born again. You got to forget all that you thought you knew about the Bible. Forget about it. Christ said this, I mean, what gen- the generation he's living in. He said this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now, let me give an example of that. Revelation 1 and verse 7. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds. Christ comes with clouds, the chariots of Israel. Read. And angels. Read. And every eye shall see him. Every eye shall see the Lord. Read. And they also which pierced him. And they also which pierced him. Wait a minute. The dude that pierced Christ when he was on the cross... Is dead and gone centuries ago, said long time ago. Christ said, The man that pierced me in the side, he gonna see me too. Now this went over Christians said they right now they, they just ripped the Bible up, they bust the TV. <laughs> so what the hell is this? They must have read that a million times, they didn't understand it. That generation that Christ spoke of is gonna be the same generation in his return. That's the general. Now watch this one I'm about to say right here. Something real heavy. I ain't going to go too deep. A lot of people say, Bishop, you should be quiet over there. You're saying too much. <laughs> Just as those unrighteous spirits, those wicked spirits, the ones that say, crucify him, crucify him, and let his blood be on us and our children. Them spirits is back today. So when you, all, you men on the street teaching, don't worry. And some of them might be your kinsfolk. I said something right there. Them, some of them same spirits that said, crucify him, crucify him. They back here today. Them Pharisees and them are all back today. The ones that reject the, what the Bible says. And guess what? The righteous are back today too. That's right. Mm. Mm. You heard what I said? You know what that means? What? Uh, you just go over... If you believe back then, you're going to come back believe again. Mm-hmm. In other words, the spirit cannot change. The righteous is always going to be the righteous. The wicked is always going to be the wicked. That's what, that's what 
Bishop Wayne earlier in Ecclesiastes. That's what Solomon was telling you. The righteous is always going to be the righteous. The chosen is always going to be the chosen. The two-third is going to be the two-third. That's what Bishop just said. Well, that's what Bishop just said. In essence, yeah. Now watch this. Go to Job chapter 19. Now I'm not going to hit all the regeneration scriptures today because I'm trying to get to the class, the point. I'm in the class, but I want to get to the point. John 19.25. Job, I'm sorry, Job 19.25. I know some of you again, some of you online are slow. Slow. Job chapter 19 verse 25. Now this is, watch, watch, watch what he says. This is Job speaking. For I know Wait, that... Wait, read, read verse 1 so we know. Job chapter 19, verse 1. Then Job answered and said... Stop. Now jump over to verse 25. Just we wanted to see who's talking. Go ahead. Verse 25. For I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that my Redeemer liveth. Go ahead. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. The, the Redeemer, the Savior is going to stand on the earth, <laughs> upon the earth at the latter day. Go ahead. And though, and, and though after my skin, worms destroy this body. And though after my skin, worms destroy this body that he's in currently. Go ahead. Yet in my flesh shall I see God. Yet in my flesh shall I see God. What? Yet in my flesh shall I see God. Go ahead. Verse 27. Whom I shall see for myself. Whom I shall see for myself. And mine eyes shall be whole, and not another. Right. I'm going to see him for myself. Ain't going to be no other out, transdimensional thing going on here. I'm going to be in my flesh, and I'm going to see him with my own eyes. Go ahead. Though my reins be consumed within me. Though my veins and everything be destroyed, I'm going to come back in my flesh. Now, you might say, well, that's talking about the kingdom. No, that's not talking about the kingdom. Notice what he says in verse 26. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Watch this, 1 Corinthians 15, 50. To show you it's not the kingdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. is just before the kingdom. Go ahead. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's how you know it ain't, going, it ain't the kingdom. Flesh and blood, you ain't entering the kingdom with this type of body. So when Job said, I'm going to see him in my flesh, that's before the kingdom. That's what Christ said in Matthew 24. Uh-oh, I said something right there. I'm going to just leave that alone. I just put that on the table for you to marinate on that stuff right there. Watch this. Let's go to 2nd Ezra 4. And we're going to start at verse 40 and 41. Second Esdras chapter four, verse 40. So he answered me and said, go thy way to a woman with child and ask of her when she hath fulfilled her nine months, if her womb may keep the birth any longer within her. So, so he says, hey, hey, Ezra, since you're so small, why don't you ask a woman if she could hold a baby inside her womb longer than nine months? Go ahead. Verse 41. Then said I, no, Lord. That can she not. Nope, she can't do it. Go ahead. And he said unto me, in the grave, the chambers of souls are like the womb of a woman. Ooh. He said, the grave is like the womb of a woman. It can't, the earth can't hold a dead but for so long. That's some heavy stuff right there. Woo. We're going to leave that thing right Let's there. Let's also go back to Ezekiel, what Solomon was trying to explain. That's right. Each of these elements have their own chambers. Mm -hmm. hey. Hey. The earth is like a woman's womb. The same way the woman cannot hold a baby for more than nine months, so is the earth have a time to hold. I'm just gonna... Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. This is why some things, you try to explain things to your Christian mama, your Catholic daddy. They, listen. Paul explained 1 Corinthians 2 and 12, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. See, that, that's what being born again is all about. Not receiving the spirit of the world. The world cannot receive what the Bible is saying. The world cannot receive God truth. 
The world can only receive what America dictates. Read it again. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Mm -hmm. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. See that? Read. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but with the Holy Ghost, but what the Holy, which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That's what understanding the Bible is about. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That comes from starting to observe and keep God's laws, his commandments, meditating on them to get your mind right. And that's the only way it can be, it can receive what's being said. Read. Verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man is the man or woman, that soul, that is not repented. That has not come to the truth that they must keep God's commandments in the faith of Christ. The natural man is the sinful man, the sinful woman that says, uh, come as you are, stay as you be. It's all good in Jesus. That's the natural man, the natural woman. Read again. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. You trying to show them that we come back? They go, that's some stupid stuff. That sound like Harry Krishna reincarnation bull crap. Are you idiot? You stupid? That's how they look at you. No, 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 ma. Look, look. Christ said that John was Elijah. I know that's what it mean. It just means he had a spirit that was like Elijah. See, you're so smart that you're stupid. They can't receive what the Bible is saying. But ma, what about this? Mm -mm. They're not receiving it. T.D. Jakes, Cruft, those spirits are natural spirits. They cannot receive. The apologetics, they are natural spirits. They are sinful spirits. Read that again. Verse 14 again. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The Bible, it must be spiritually discerned. To be to spiritually discern it, give me that song. Here's the key, Psalms 111, 10, please. They're missing a key element. Psalms chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. See that? The natural man won't understand that. The natural man, the natural woman, the sinful man, the sinful woman, the carnal man, the carnal woman. That's all saying the same thing. They're not going to understand that. Keep the command. No, no, no. Mm. Grace, grace, grace. Watch this. Genesis 4. Genesis chapter 4. Let's start at verse 1. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. All right. The word Cain means acquired or gotten. Go ahead. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Mm, so Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Mm, go ahead. Verse 3, and in the process of time... So remember, right now you got Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. I'm going by what Christianity says. Go ahead. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Mm -hmm. Now, watch this. Look at Numbers 18, 17. A lot of people, uh, not a lot, Christians think that the law initially came by Moses, but there were laws already in effect from the time of Adam and Eve. Read that. Numbers chapter 18, verse 17. Mm -hmm. But the firstling of a cow, or the firstling of a sheep, or the firstling of a goat, thou shalt not redeem. They are holy. Meaning you can't keep it to yourself. You must give the firstling to the Lord. They are holy. Go ahead. Thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar and shalt burn their fat for an offering made by fire for a sweet savor unto the Lord. Let's go back to Genesis 4. Gen and verse 4 again. Genesis chapter 4, verse 4. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock 
and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. And that's because the law of sacrifice was instituted at the end of chapter 3 when Adam and Eve went off, when they sinned. God taught them how to get mercy, how to get forgiveness. It was, that's what the part about, uh, where's the coats of skins, where's that at, what verse, in chapter 3? 21. Yeah, yeah, and unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. That's going into, he gave them the law of sacrifice. This is why in chapter 4, Cain and Abel understood what it was about. Well, I'll say this, Abel understood. If you notice what Cain did, he came with fruits and vegetables. Read. Verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. The Lord did not have respect to the fruits and vegetables he offered. Go ahead. And Cain was very wroth. And Cain was pissed the hell off. Go ahead. And his countenance fell. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? What you mad for? Fix your face. Go ahead. And why is thy countenance fallen? Mm -hmm. Why are you depressed? Go ahead. Verse 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If you obey what I said, won't you be accepted? Go ahead. And if thou doest not well. And if you disobey my commandments. Go ahead. Sin lieth at the door. Sin is at your door. Go ahead. And unto thee shall be his desire. And unto the thee there is Satan. And unto Satan shall be his desire. Go ahead. And thou shalt rule over him. And Satan, you shall rule over this guy right here. That's what he's saying. Read. Verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to Wait, pass. I'm sorry. Give me Psalms 109, verse 6. I just want to show you all a precept for that. Verse 7. Psalms 109, verse 6. Psalm 109, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. See that right there? Going back to Genesis 4. That's what it means. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Satan's at this man's right hand. I'm, mm, remind me to come back to this. I'll make sure. With Thessalonians. Go ahead. Genesis chapter 4, what, verse 7 or 8? Verse 8, and Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. He killed his brother. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel, thy brother? Where is Abel, thy brother? Go ahead. And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? How am I supposed to know? Am I my brother's keeper? Go ahead. And he said, Why? what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Mm. Something about the blood. Watch this. Hold this. I'm going to sidestep just for a second. Look at Leviticus 17. Yeah, go ahead. You know what? Let me tell you. As I'm reading this. <laughs> he said, can kill his brother Abel, right? So, as I'm reading this, you got Israelite today who got Cain spirit on them. Mm -hmm. When you look at the middle rate on our black in the, in the black community, these men don't have the spirit of Mosai on them. Right. They have the, they have the spirit of Cain. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you are murder, if you kill your brother, you have the spirit of Esau on you. Mm -hmm. That's how heavy this is go. Mm -hmm. Leviticus seventeen fourteen. Look at this. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 14. Watch about, talk about the blood. Go ahead. For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore, I said unto the children of Israel, ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. So when the Lord sends a spirit, Esau tries to figure out how does the spirit or a soul stay with contained in a body it's through the blood the blood is what contains or holds that spirit in place he saw the white man ain't figured that thing out yet go back now to genesis genesis chapter 4 verse 10 is that the verse i want uh, what i want you to remember what you just read so we stay on point on precept verse oh you yes, was right you yes, could. Sir. go ahead yes sir and he said what has thou done the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Because the blood is where the life was. Go ahead. And now art thou cursed from the earth. And now art thou cursed from the... Now, right, that right there, 
When him getting cursed from the earth, look at Genesis 2, 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So when he formed man of the dust of the ground, the dust of the ground is brown. Adam was a melanated man. Adam was a black man. So now Cain got cursed from the ground. What you think happened to that melanin with him? He, 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 he looked like your favorite neighborhood white boy. Let's go on back now. Verse 11 again. Verse 11. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. This is why even now you got to think about it. This is generational. Because when you examine today, this is why the white man sets up GMO, genetically modified organism and all of that. They got the, what's that, Mon, Mon, Monstaso? Monsanto. Monsanto. Where you can only use, you, and it's some crazy stuff with those, these seeds they create in a laboratory. You can only use them one time, things of that nature. It corrupts the soil. Okay, read that again. You know what's so heavy on bishops? I don't know how many of you travel a lot. Like me, I'm, I drive trucks. I was always wondering, Bishop, Esau got millions of acres of land empty. You ever ask yourself why they, they, they got land to produce food for the whole, why they never did it? Mm -hmm. That's that scripture right there. Mm -hmm. They curse, the ground is cursed because of them, so they cannot produce nothing. That's what Bishop after GMO stuff. Mm -hmm. I was wondering why they got, they got, you got like empty land, you've been driving for miles, hours, you see nothing but empty land. Nothing in them. Why they're not using those land to produce food? Mm -hmm. That's right. We don't. Verse 12. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. Because remember in, uh, I believe it's the book of Numbers, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Remember when uh, Moses sent the 12 men into the land to spy out the land. They brought back grapes. It said two of them carried back grapes. Because the grapes was huge. There wasn't these little things we got today. They took two of them to carry the grapes back. Read. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. You see that? A fugitive. You know what a fugitive is? Someone that has never paid for their crimes. This is generational cursing here. Go ahead. Verse and 13. a vagabond's a bum, meaning you, you're a wanderer. You're all over the place. Go ahead. A bum. Verse 13. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. My punishment, that's why you know it's more than just... The people go, oh, it was just the ground that he got cursed with, so it doesn't yield it. No, no, it was more than that. That's why he got cursed from the earth. All that melanin was gone. That's why he says here, my punishment is more than I can bear. Go ahead. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, mm -hmm. and from thy face shall I be hid. And, and you ain't going to deal with me no more. From thy face I shall be hid, meaning God will not deal with Cain, this white man, ever again. Go ahead. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. See that? Now that's the key right there to let you know that there's more. Because if you go by Christian standards, it's Adam and Eve, and now it's just Cain. That's three people. So who's the everyone? Meaning there was more people. And you got to think about creation. If you, if you ever get stuck in a moment, when he created the birds of the air, did he create just one boy bird and one girl bird? And what kind of bird was it? Because there's multitudes of species of birds. You got eagles, falcons, ospreys, doves, and pigeons, parakeets. When he made the dogs, did he just make one kind of a, a bo one boy dog and one girl dog? When he made elephant, one boy elephant and one girl elephant? All kinds. Sheep, goats, cattle, fish. Think about it. He made multitudes based on one. Multitudes. He did the same thing with man. This is why Cain says here, everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Why? Why did he know that? How did he know that? He understood the law. There was laws of murder already instituted. That's how Cain understood, I'm going to get killed because of what the law says. People are going to kill me. Give me that in Genesis 9 and 6. Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. You see that? So this was after the, the ark. 
after the flood. They already knew the law. They already knew the law of murder. Don't let people fool you. Go, no, 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 those laws are instituted with Moses. Oh, no, 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 not all of them. Some were and some weren't. Watch this. Lord, we're going to talk about murder just for a moment, just for a second. Exodus 21, 12. The law of murder. Just curious. Exodus chapter 21, verse 12. Mm -hmm. He that smiteth a man so that he die shall be surely put to death. Because remember the law in Exodus 20 said, where was it? Where was it? Exodus 20 and verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. That's what Moses said. Thou shalt not kill. Somebody, so then now there were situations happening where Moses had to go and give uh, statutes, meaning sub laws. So now in verse 20, chapter 21, verse 11, verse 12, he that smiteth a man so that he die shall surely be put to death. You bust somebody up to head, upside the head and they die, you're going to die. But watch this, read. Verse 13, and if a man lie not in wait, but God deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whither he shall flee. So notice, and if a man lie not in wait, meaning you wasn't waiting to put this dude to death, this dude, for some ungodly or unknown reason, just jumped on you. That's what it means when it says, and if a man lie not in wait, meaning you didn't wait to put him to death, but God delivered him into his hand, meaning now God caused you to win the fight. This dude was plotting and scheming on you, and you won. You ever be in your house? Well, in the movies. <laughs> you know in the movie, the, the, the burglar or whoever jumps out and, and gets you? Now, most of they, they say that the reason... These burglaries, not burglaries, let me start using that word. These murders happen in the house is because the murderer often gets you by surprise. But you'll have that one case or two where you catch the person and that guy, the victim, gets the upper hand. You ever see those movies? Where they get the upper hand. So now, and if a man lie not in wait, but deliver him into his hand, but God deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whither he shall flee. Talking about the city of refuge. Read. Verse 14. Watch this. But if a man. But. but now he says it comes back now. But. Go ahead. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile. You was plotting and you was scheming. Go ahead. Thou shalt take him from mine altar that he may die. He says that guy kill him. There's no place for that guy to run. I want that guy dead. Numbers 35, 16, please. Right, premeditated murder. Premeditated. That's what presumptuous goes into. Premeditated. Numbers 35, verse 16. Numbers chapter 35, verse 16. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. So now Moses is going to go through it again. Go ahead. You smite somebody with an instrument of iron that he die, you shall surely be put to death. Go ahead. Verse 17. And if he smite him with throwing a stone, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. So he said, even in this, you throw a rock in the air, and it busts somebody in the head, and that person dies. It says, the murderer shall surely be put to death. Go ahead. Or if he smite Notice him. Notice the wording, wherewith he may die, and he die. Notice the wording. Because you might, let's say you just shoot a gun. Boosh! You might die because it may or may not hit you because you're not aiming at nobody. But you shoot in the air. What goes up, what? Must come down. That bullet's going to land somewhere. That's why you simple brothers busting shots off at Feast of Tabernacle. I don't know what's wrong with some of y'all. Simple as how somebody could get hit. But I didn't mean to hit. No. Yeah, you know, you hear that in court all the time. I didn't mean to do it, but you did, Blanche. But you did. So, yeah. Hey, by the way, those brothers, don't bring them back to Feast of Tabernacle with you. I'm serious. Because you, these brothers, they're not thinking. They're selfish. They put everybody's life in danger. Because they could have asked you guys to leave and mess up your whole Feast of Tabernacle. Guess what? Brother, you guys who do that next year, don't come back. Go ahead. Verse 18. Or if he smite him with a hand weapon of wood, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. Mm -hmm. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Go ahead. 
The revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer. Now, the revenger of blood is the next of kin, the family. They need to bring this thing on back here. The family has the right to put the murderer to death. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. The revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer. When he meeteth him, he shall slay him. But if he thrust him of hatred or hurl at him by laying of weight that he die, or in enmity smite him with his hand that he die, he that smote him shall surely be put to death. For he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. So that's so he gives an example. But if he thrust him of hatred, you know how you just push somebody, you, you hate him. And that person, you did it presumptuously, you push them down the stairs and they break their neck. Because you did all that out of hatred. Go ahead. Verse 22. Now he's going to talk, he's giving examples here of what they call accidental deaths, manslaughter. Go ahead. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity. But if you push somebody, y'all might be playing. And you push somebody. And now this person, has something happened, they fall down and die. Or they hit their head on a rock. Y'all was just playing. You know how kids play outside? You didn't mean to do that. Y'all were just playing outside. Read that again, verse 22, please. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity. Without hatred. Or have cast upon him anything without laying of weight. Right. You know how when you're a kid, we used to throw snowballs at each other. But occasionally, we would put rocks inside the snowball. <laughs> now, that's dangerous. Now, as a kid, you don't think. Now, you just want that snowball to bust somebody upside the head. Little do you know that that rock, has, if it hits in the right spot, you could die. We stupid kids. Read that again. Verse 22. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity or have cast upon him anything without laying of weight or with any stone wherewith a man may die, seeing him not and cast it upon him. You see that part, seeing him not. So now you throw the rock in the air. You don't see nobody. You shoot a gun in the air. You don't see nobody. And there's nobody here. Boosh. Or you throw that rock in the air. That's what it means when it says seeing him not. Go ahead. And cast it upon him. That he died and was not his enemy, neither sought his harm. Right. You wasn't his enemy. You, didn't, you wasn't planning to do this brother or sister no harm. It just happened. It's accidental. Go ahead. Then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according mm. to these judgments. So now you got to slay the murderer and the family. There must be a judgment. Because the, the dude, the man of Wilma is dead. Now the family has to take the place for the dead person. Go ahead. Verse 25. That's what 24. Read 24 one more again. Verse 24. Then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. And the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood. And the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge, whither he was, fl he was fled. So the dude had obviously ran to the city of refuge. Then they said, listen, we got to hear the whole, because the guy's saying, I'm innocent. I did not mean to kill him. So they bring out the slayer, the murderer, the family's here. Now the congregation, the judges is listening to what happened. I threw something in the air. I didn't know Sally was coming. She came from around the house and it hit her. Now she's dead. So it says, the, it said, now the judgment was, where was that at again? Verse 25. Verse 20, read it again. And the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood. Right. Deliver the slayer, the murderer, out of the revenger of blood, telling the family you can't kill him because it was accidental. Go ahead. And the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge, whither he was fled. So there's a place where you had to run to and you had to stay there. Go ahead. And he shall abide in it unto the death of the high priest which was anointed with the holy oil. So you had to stay in a city of refuge until the death of the high priest. You could not leave that place. Go ahead. Verse 26. But if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, whither he was fled, and the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge, and the revenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood. Right, because the judgment was for that crime, you had to stay in the city of refuge. If you step outside the boundaries of that city and a family member, that's the revenge of blood, catch you and kills you, there's no judgment on the revenge of blood. Go ahead. Verse 28. 
because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return into the land of his possession. You see that? Go ahead. So these things shall be for a statute of judgment unto you throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Mm, so let's go on back now. Let's go on back to, what was where? Genesis 4. Yes, sir. Genesis 4, verse 13. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from the face, from, from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. So I want you to see that part where it says, From thy face shall I be hid. That goes back to verse uh, 7. Read 7 again. Verse 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Here's, here it comes. Go ahead. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. He's talking about Satan here. Satan's going to rule him. Why? Because what we just read earlier in verse, what verse was that you just read? Verse 14. Yes, and sir. from thy face shall I be hit. Meaning, Lord, you're not going to deal with me no more. Satan was going to deal with him. Okay, watch this, read. Verse 15, and the Lord said unto him, therefore, whoever, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Mm. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. So that mark goes into Satan, the mark of sin, and it's dealing with him losing his melanin. Give me the first book I sent. Give me the first book. Go to it. I want the one that says West African Studies. Click that. Right there. Put it on the screen. I found this interesting. This uh, white woman wrote this book. She did. She's going throughout Africa doing studies on the various tribes. Mary H. Kingsley. Now go to the next page, please. Yep. Zoom in the highlighted. Read that for us. Same Semitic source is that when Cain killed Abel, he was horrified at himself and terrified of God. And so he carried the body away from beside the altar where it lay and carried it about for years trying to hide it. But not knowing how, growing white the while with the horror and the fear until one day he saw a crow scratching a hole in the desert sand and it struck him that it that, that if he made a hole in the sand and put the body in, he could hide it from God. So he did. But all his children were white. And from Cain came the white races, while Abel's children are black. And all men, as all men, as, as all men were before the first murder. Wow. Wow. I just thought that was very interesting. I said, wow, check that out. I know the devil's a lie, but she said something right there. <laughs> Give me, um, Go back to Genesis 4 and read on. I want to show you something. Genesis chapter 4, verse 16. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Now, we went over this before. I'm not going to get too deep on this, but read on. So I'm just going to get to the key point I want you to see. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he built a city. And called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. Now, notice he built a city. But why would he build a city if it was just Adam and Eve and Cain? He found a wife from somewhere. He said, everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Now he built a city. Go ahead. Verse 18. I'm proving it, is more than, it was more than just Adam and Eve and Cain. Read. And unto Enoch was born Irade. And Irade begat Mahujuel. And Mahujel begot Methuselah, and Methuselah begot Lamech, and Lamech took unto, unto him two wives, and the name of one was Ada, and the name of the other Zillah. And Ada bare, bare Jabal. He was father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have camp, cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal, 
He was the father of all such as handle the harp and organ. So through Cain's line came music. Go ahead. They created harps and organs. Read. Verse 22. And Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Naama. So Tubal Cain was an instructor. It says, or wetter, meaning he instructed people on how to create weapons. I want you to understand that. Cain seed began to create all forms of weaponry. Go ahead. Verse 23. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding. I slain a man. I killed somebody. I murdered somebody. Go ahead. And a young man to my hurt. And it was a young man. Young man did try to do me something. I murdered him. Go ahead. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. So why would he say if Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold? That goes back to verse 22 again. Verse 22. And Zillah, she also bare to Paul Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. So all of his family, you mess with one of them, you mess with all of them. And they had all kinds of weapons. Weapons that other people did not have. I want you to see what's going on here. Go back where you was at. Verse 25. Uh-huh. And Adam knew his wife again. And she bare a son and called his name Seth. Mm-hmm. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Right. So Seth means appointed. Go ahead. Verse 26. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son. And he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Meaning that's when prayer was instituted. Because prior to that, look, I want y'all to see. Jump back up to verse 9. Verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? So what's happening? The Lord would just come down and have conversations. Hey, what's going on? What's this going on? What's going on over here? But now notice verse 26. Go ahead. Verse 26. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Now you had to, you had to pray. You had to call upon the Lord. Okay? And, and he gave him the, his name at that time. Now you're going to call. If you want something, you got to pray to me. That's what was instituted. From there. Now watch this. Go to Genesis 6. And let's start at verse 1. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. Mm-hmm. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. So the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they was good looking. Go ahead. And they took them wives of all which they chose. So Christians, Christianity says, see, Michael and all the archangels of heaven came down having sex with women. No, no, they didn't. Sorry. You got, you tried to get your lust on, but that's not what's happening. Read on. It's going to say. Verse three. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Stop. Why you got a problem with man? It was the angels, right? It was the angels that came down as you say in Christianity. So why God got, why he mad with man? Why didn't he say my spirit shall not always strive with you angels? Yes. Because those angels that he's talking about, the sons of God, was man. Read. For that he also is flesh. Oh, for that he also is. So these sons of God is man in the flesh. The Bible's telling you who's talking about. Read. Yet his days shall be in 120 years. And I'm going to cut down the lifespan of man. Just because all this was going on here. Go ahead. Verse 4. So this is that sin that was going on was interracial marriage, interracial sexuality. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Go ahead. Verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear children to them, they the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. So the children that we had with these women of other nations became mighty men, famous men upon the earth. Go ahead. Verse 5. Now watch this. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Well, why ain't he mad with 
The angels. Why is he still picking on man? Because it was man that did the sin. Read. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Mm -hmm. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. Oh, go ahead. And it grieved him at his heart. Read. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth. So now he's so mad. He said, I'm going to destroy man. But what about the sons of God? If you Christians are listening, why isn't God mad with the angels? Ask us, ask your, go ask your pastor that. Go ahead. Both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For repented me that I've made them. Mm, so repented him that he made them. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Verse 8. Wait, 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 wait. I'm pausing here for a second. Watch this. Look at Genesis 7 and 1. Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah. No, stay in 6, stay in 6. I'm sorry. I want verse 17. Genesis chapter 6, verse 17. Yes. And behold. I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. So now the Lord's telling Noah, I'm going to kill all the people on the planet. So now, I'm going to jump ahead just for a moment. I want you to just watch this. Go to Exodus chapter 1. Oh, I didn't forget the topic. You might have forgotten. But I didn't forget. Exodus chapter 1. And just look at verse mm, 7. Exodus chapter 1 verse 7. And the children of Israel, Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. Mm -hmm. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there, when there falleth out any war, they join also unto the, our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Verse 11. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and, Ra and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. What did the children of Israel do? They were born as a nation and made slaves. And why don't the ever ask themselves, well, what was their sin? Look at Exodus 4.22 now. They were, we were born a nation and made slaves. The hell is going on here? What did we do? Watch this, verse 22. Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Israel is my son. Israel is my son, even the firstborn. I know that might, some of you still don't get it. Go back to Genesis 6 and 1. You don't get it. Genesis. We went, now we went, this was, Exodus one took place after the flood. But notice before the flood, Genesis 6, please. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. The sons of God, the sons of God, Exodus 4.22 now again, because it might have gone over some of your heads. Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Notice, after the sons of God did what they did, the Lord instituted the flood and killed everybody. After the flood, the nations are coming back now. Now you've got this nation called Israel that God says, this is my son. This is the son of God. Do you understand what's going on here? If I'm, if I'm going too fast, y'all let me know now. Let's go on back. Let's go on back now. Genesis 7. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, 
Come thou in all thy house into the ark, for, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female. So notice, of the clean beast, the Lord said take by seven, male and female. How much is that total? Fourteen. But on TV and in your Christians, it was only two, two. You stupid as hell. Stop. That's what Christ said. You must be born again. Next thing is, how come Noah didn't go, uh, excuse me, Lord. I don't know what a clean and unclean is. I'm confused. Read again. Verse 2. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. So how many of unclean beasts they had? Four. Male and female, by twos. So notice, you might ask the question, well, how did Noah know what was clean and unclean? Remember, Abel was doing what? Sacrificing, right? You think he sacrificed a pig to the Lord? No. There was already laws instituted on clean and unclean in terms of sacrifice. Not in terms of eating, but in terms of sacrifice. Now, I said not in terms of eating because the law for eating meat didn't come in until Genesis chapter 9. Okay, 9 and verse 3. Y'all can write that down. Nine ver- read verse 3 just in case. I know somebody's going to ask after class. Genesis 9 and 3 is when the diet changed from herbs and vegetation to meat. Go ahead. Genesis chapter 9 verse 3. This is after the ark. They're getting off the ark. Go ahead. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. See, even as the green herb have I given you all things. People often ask the question, like I hear comedic community, how come when they was on the ark, the lions wasn't eating everything and the tigers, the, the carnivores wasn't eating everything? Because they didn't eat meat at that time. Give me that Genesis 1. I'm just jumping around for a second. I'm getting back on point. Genesis 1. You know a verse on one, right? Is it 29? Yes, but sir. I'm not looking at it. I'm yes, sir. Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree, yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. I want the one about the animals. Might be the verse above it. I'm not looking at it. I'm counting on you, Nechemiah, to find the verse. It's right there. Yes, sir. Next verse. Verse 30. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every, every green herb for meat. And it was so. Right. So the tigers ate herbs and vegetables. The bears, the lions, they all was vegan. Everything was vegan at that time. Everything. Men and animals. So it wasn't until after the flood when the Lord instituted meat into the diet. Okay, everybody with me so far? All right, all right, all right. Let's go back to Genesis 7 now. Genesis chapter 7. And I want verse 17. Verse 17. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased, increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went upon the face of the waters, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beast, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man, and all in whose nostrils was the breath of life. Of all that was in dry land, that died. lets you know that the sons of God again were man. It was man. Go ahead. Verse 23. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven. And they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive. And they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days. Give me wisdom of Solomon 10, please. Wisdom of Solomon 10. So a lot was going on there before the flood. And now we're in a time period after the flood. Before the flood, 
You had nations upon the earth. They were all destroyed. After the flood, guess what? One generation comes, and another generation comes again. Remember we read about the sunrise in the east, or the one part, and it goes down in the other in haste to the place where, from whence it came. Then it talked about the rivers running into the sea, yet the sea is not overflown. And go right back to the rivers once again. It's talking about mankind. So now, man was on the earth, man gets destroyed off the earth. Now the floods pass, man comes back again. The sons of God were killed before the flood. They came back in Egypt. That's why the Lord said, Israel is my son. Everybody with me so far? All right. Where did I say go? Wisdom of Solomon 10. Yes, sir. And let's start at verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. She, pre pre she preserved the first form formed father of the world. Mm -hmm. That was created alone and brought him out of his fall and gave him power to rule all things. Adam had power to rule all things. Watch this. Verse 3. Watch this. But when the unrighteous went away from her in his anger. The unrighteous that went away from her in his anger was Cain. Go ahead. He perished also in the fury wherewith he murdered his brother. So the same way Cain had murdered his brother Abel, he perished the same way. That's why, watch this, Genesis 9 and 6. Let's go back to the law of murder. Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. Mm -hmm. For in the image of God made he man. See there? Go back now to Wisdom of Solomon 10 and 3. Read verse 3 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 3. But when the unrighteous went away from her in his anger, he perished also in the fury wherewith he murdered his brother. Read. For whose cause the earth being drowned with flood. Because mm -hmm. from the time of Cain, now it was set. Sin, everything was going evil as hell. Go ahead. Wisdom again preserved it. And directed the course of the righteous in a piece of wood of small value. The righteous was spared by wood. God had him create an ark of gopher's wood. From there, chapter 14, please. Actually, you know what I want? Jump down to verse 10. Say right there, jump. I want verse 10. Verse 10. When the righteous fled from his brother's wrath, she guided him in right paths, showed him the kingdom of God, and gave him knowledge of holy things, made him rich in his travails, and multiplied the fruit of his labors. Now read that again. Verse 10. When the righteous fled from his brother's wrath. When the righteous fled from his brother's wrath. Go to Genesis 28 and 5. Who is the righteous that fled? From? The brother's wrath is the same wrath of Cain. But watch this. Where you at? Genesis chapter 28 verse 5. Mm -hmm. And Isaac sent away Jacob. And he went to Pandanaram unto Laban. Son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. Now, that was the end of verse 5? Yes, sir. Jump over to verse 10. Verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Verse 12. Wait, let's go back. Go back to uh, Wisdom of Solomon 10 and 10. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10, verse 10. When the righteous fled from his brother's wrath, she guided him in right path. So this is going when Jacob fled from Esau. That's the brother's wrath. Go ahead. Showed him the kingdom of God. She showed, wisdom showed Jacob the kingdom of God. That's when he went to sleep and he saw angels going up and down from heaven to the earth. Go ahead. And gave him knowledge of holy things, made him rich in his travails, and multiplied the fruit of his labors. Right, because Jacob became very rich. Okay? Now, the part where it says showed him the kingdom of God, go back to Genesis 28 and 12. I just want to verify that he showed him the kingdom of God. Genesis 28, verse 12 to 22. Genesis chapter 28, verse 12. And he dreamed... And behold, a ladder set up on earth, on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Read. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, 
The land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, in thy, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. You know what's funny about that verse right there? He's telling Jacob, your seed will be scattered from the north, south, east. Your seed going to be scattered throughout the world. Then it says, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. He's talking about the Israelites scattered everywhere. Christians will read that and go, see, the Chinese is blessed. See, uh, the white man, the Irish. Is, no, it's telling you to see that Jacob is going to be everywhere. That's it. Read on. Verse 15. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest. And will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Verse 16. And Jacob waked out of his sleep. And he said, surely the Lord is in this place. Mm -hmm. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. That's where Esau gets that movie. What was it called? Stargate? Was that the name of it? Where they have a gate and it take you to other worlds? That's where they got that from. So he said, this gate here leads to heaven. Okay, now there's heavy stuff in that right there. Because Christ said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. Hmm, I said something right now. I'll just put that on the table. Go, go back to Wisdom of Solomon, please. Wisdom of Solomon. I want chapter 14. And five. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 5. Nevertheless, thou wouldest not that the works of thy wisdom should be idle. And therefore do men commit their lives to a small piece of wood. And passing the rough sea in a weak vessel are saved. That's what happened with Noah. Go ahead. For in the old time also, when the proud giants per perished. That's what we read about in Genesis 6. Mm -hmm. The hope of the world Governed by thy hand, escaped in a weak vessel. Who escaped in a weak vessel? That was Noah and his family and the animals that was with him. Go ahead. And left to all ages a seed of generation. Read. For blessed is the wood whereby righteousness cometh. Mm -hmm. But that which is made with hands is cursed. Wow. And <laughs> From there, I want to leave that. Leave that. Let's go to back to Genesis 4. And I want verse 11. Genesis chapter 4, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground. Jump down to 15. Verse 15. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain. So lest, now, go ahead. Lest any finding him should kill him. So God cursed Cain. Cursed him from the earth. Melon, melon was gone. That was before the flood. What happened after the flood? Genesis 25, 25. Genesis chapter 25, verse 25. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. <laughs> and they called his name Esau. So this kid... Had no melanin either. He said, now, this, notice, this is after the flood. After everybody's dead, now this baby comes in the earth, cursed from the earth with no melanin. Hmm, I wonder who this spirit is. Go back to Genesis 4. I want verse 5 and 8, please. Genesis chapter 4, verse 5. But unto Cain and his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Mm-hmm. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? Jump to verse 8. Verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Now, from there, that was before the flood. Let's go after the flood. Genesis 27, 41. Genesis chapter 27, verse 41. Mm -hmm. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. Remember, Esau was the red and heavy one, the one with no melanin. It said he hated his brother. He couldn't stand his brother. He wanted to murder his brother. Go back to Genesis 4, verse 22, please. Genesis chapter 4, verse 22. 
and Zillah. She also bare Tubal Cain, mm-hmm. an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Naamah. So Esau's kids had the art of weapons. Watch this. Go to Genesis 27 and 40. Genesis chapter 27, verse 40. And by the sword shall thou live. That was Esau's blessing. you going to live by the sword. You and your descendants going to live by the sword. Go ahead. And shall serve thy brother. Mm-hmm. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. That's after, during the time of Solomon, when they broke, after Solomon, I mean, when they broke from under Israel's rulership. But the point of that verse we wanted, and by thy sword thou shalt live. They had the blessing of war. Just like Cain's seed had the blessing of war, making all manner of weapons. Does Esau have that power today in earth? You better believe they got that power. They got weapons you ain't even put on TV yet. Okay? Let's look at Ezekiel 35 verse 5. Now, we still, right now I'm still dealing with after the flood. I took you before the flood, after the flood. Ezekiel chapter 35 verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. No, they have not hated blood. Why? Remember what happened. It says, the Lord said to Cain, to Cain your brother's blood crieth out to me. Go back to verse 5. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 35 verse 5 because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. See some of y'all think or some of the people listening you think you can really charm this white man to love black people. The Bible has prophesied. This is for you entertainers out there that think you got the magic words. Your words is garbage. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword. Okay, that was what they have done. That's what they have did. Okay, give me Malachi chapter 1, please. They're still doing it today. Exactly. I'm sorry, jump up to verse 1 in Ezekiel 35. There's something I just want to show you. Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 1. Read. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. I know this dumb Christian apologetics. Read. Son of man. They hold on to every word to see when you read above it, my brother, and keep the text in the context of what it's saying. Well, let's see what the context is. Read. Set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. Set thy face against Mount Seir. Hmm. Hmm. Give me that in Genesis 36, verse 8 and 9, about Mount Seir. Mount Seir. Mount Seir. Genesis chapter 36, 36 verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Mm. So Esau is Edom and they dwelt where? In Mount Seir. So when we go back to Ezekiel 35 and verse 2. Ezekiel chapter 35 verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. So, watch this now. I'm going to go back before the flood. Genesis 4 again. Let's go right back before the flood. I got a text that said I'm going too fast, so I'll try to slow down a little bit. Y- yes, as is I, I will go down. I'll slow down. Genesis 4. And uh, watch this. <laughs> Genesis 4, and we want verse 7. Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire. Sin lieth at the door. 
And he unto thee shall be his desire, meaning Satan. He's the, he's the king of sin. He instituted all of this. So it's letting you know the devil's going to rule over Cain's seed. Is that in the New Testament? Go to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 8. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8. Uh, it's, it's, the point is in verse 9. Just read 9. Verse 9. Even him. Even him. The son of perdition. Even him. The who, people of Esau. Even him. The, the, the descendants of Cain. Go ahead. Whose coming is after the working of Satan. With all power and signs and lying wonders. So Paul is letting us know that this man in the last days, his comings and goings would be after the workings of Satan. Satan would be at his be at his right hand. Satan would be his God. Read it again. Verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Wanna give me the next book? Put it on the screen so I can see. Uh, I want modern Judaism. Put that on the screen. Yep. All right. This is by John Allen. Let's go inside the book. Yes, I just did the reminder. All right. Wait, wait, wait. We'll go to the top. Let me see the top. All right. Esau's descendants. Wait, now we're going to talk about Esau. All right. Let's read uh, first. Let's start there, Nechemiah. Yes, sir. First, that the descendants of Esau. Why did it pop off the screen? All right. That the descendants of Esau, the sworn, sworn enemies of the descendants of Jacob, even to the end of the world. Now, Esau is the so-called Caucasian race. Jacob is us, the 12 tribes of Israel. The scholars, the scholars, the scholars say Esau is the sworn enemies of the descendants of Jacob, even to the end of the world. You're not going to change them. You're not going to sex them into loving. You have black women. If I give him my coochie, he's going to love us. No, no, he might like your nappy coochie, but he don't love your people. And then, you know me how our people say they're going to make a covenant with Esau. Yeah. It's not happening. Exactly. Let's read on. You know, well, go ahead. In the movie, I, I just this one scene out of Antebellum. The dude's banging this woman, and he gets a huge brand and burns his family's initials in her back. And that's their love. That was love for the black woman. Go ahead. We're at first a small nation inhabiting. Where are you at? Okay, I'm sorry. I got lost. Yes, sir. We're at first. Can you start again first so I don't lose? Yes, sir. First. That the descendants of Esau, the sworn enemies of the descendants of Jacob, even to the end of the world, were at first a small nation inhabiting Mount Seir and the adjacent country contigu contiguous to the land of Canaan, that they were easily confined within their own limits as long as the Israelites enjoyed a great and formidable empire in Canaan. Mm -hmm. But that after the powerful republic of the twelve... Raise it up. Raise it up. Raising tribes mm -hmm. was destroyed by the Assyrians and Babylonians. Hey, where are we at? Uh, Elisha, can you put the little highlighter there because I'm lost. Where are you at? Okay. Go ahead. They wonderfully increased in numbers and strength, extended their dominion towards the west, spread their colonies far and wide, subjugated Italy, founded Rome and the Roman Empire. Stop! Esau founded Rome and the Roman Empire. Esau founded Rome and the Roman Empire. Can you tell his dumb Christian apologetics this? Esau founded Rome and the Roman Empire. Read. At length, entirely overturned the Jewish state which had been restored after the termination of the Babylonian captivity. The second temple being destroyed by Titus Vespasian and that in the present day professing the religion of Jesus of Nazareth which they were the first of all nations to embrace. Stop. Rome, that in the present day, meaning up until today, notice it, and that in the present day, professing the religion of Jesus of Nazareth, meaning Christianity, 
The Christianity that they embrace is a perverted or a perversion of the teachings of Christ. What is their form? What is their version of Christianity? God is white. His son is white or so-called white, really red. Um, he came to die for all people on the planet Earth. And you blacks ain't nothing but a group of Gentile niggas. Immaculate conception goes with that. Uh, they changed the Sabbath to the first day of the week. Uh, the Jews are all white now, Jewish. Um, Easter is a holiday. Uh, Christmas is a holiday. So when it says, and that in the present day, professing the religion of Jesus of Nazareth is their perversion to it. Read. They hold the dominion over all Europe. Notice, Esau holds the dominion over all Europe. Let's read that part again. Esau, they hold the dominion over all Europe. Go ahead. Esau detaining in captivity his brother Jacob. Now the scholars are saying, now remember, this book wasn't written to the average Negro. This was written to their people. That's right. It said Esau detaining in captivity his brother Jacob. Now you just got to think a minute. Who does the white man have dominion over? Us. We were the ones, we're still in captivity. Can you tell the black, the urban apologist, you're still a slave, my nigga. You're still a slave. (laughs) Read on. At least as far as regards the tribe of Judah, till his Messiah, Ben David, shall appear. Meaning son of David, Messiah, son of David, shall appear. Read. Secondly, that the prophecies of the prophets against Esau... Edom, Seir. Now, we just read about Esau, Edom, Seir in Ezekiel 35. Go ahead. And the cities of Edom. And the cities of Edom. Go ahead. Next page. That was page 231. Especially those of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Obadiah have not yet received their full accomplishment. See that? And what Christians like to do, especially the stupid apologetics, they say, No, all the prophecies were fulfilled about Esau, Edom. They were destroyed already. Then how come the scholars know that the prophecies concerning Esau, Edom in Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Obadiah have not yet received their full accomplishment? The scholars know that. See, their job, when you got those idiots like John Mark Reiser, you got a little group of niggas that follow behind them. White man, white man, white man power. Now they look, their faces are cracked and and on the ground. Read on. For that, though the house of Esau has experienced some particular judgments of God. Yeah, Esau has had some experience with particular judgments of God. Go ahead. On account of the injuries at different periods of time inflicted upon Israel. Because of what they did to the Israelites. Go ahead. Yet the final vengeance. Yet the final vengeance. On account of that last and greatest injury. Mm -hmm. The destruction of the second temple by Titus. And the transportation of the Jews into captivity, in which they are still most appropriately detained. So the Jews are still hatefully detained in slavery. Captivity means slavery. Go ahead. Is yet impending over it. Is yet impending over You know how you pay a bill and it says impending? <laughs> Go ahead. Payment be, impending. Go ahead. To be executed in the time of the Messiah. It's going to be executed. The final vengeance will be executed in the time of the Messiah. So when we say we can't wait till the Lord come back, it's a different meaning when white folks say that. We're talking about two different things. Go ahead. That this is foretold by the prophets in all their denunciations of the severest plagues against the house of Esau, the cities of Edom, the cities of Edom, and Mount Seir. That's that's America. That's England. The cities inside them, these large places they got: Germany, France, Russia. Go ahead, Spain. Go ahead. Which all belong to Rome Mm -hmm. and the Christians. And that the fate of Christians at that time will be far more dreadful than that of Mohammedans. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I want y'all to see that. I want y'all, because y'all didn't see that. Y'all didn't didn't pay attention. And that the fate of Christians at that time, meaning when Christ returns, will be far more dreadful than that of Muslims. Mm -hmm. See, y'all, we've been getting on Muslims, but the scholars say, no, no, no. The Christians are going to re- receive a worse judgment. That's right. So all of your mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers that are Christians, the scholars know the Christians are going to get a worse judgment on them than Muslims. This is some, this is some heavy stuff right here. Why? Why? 
Why? Because Christianity changed the image of God. They changed the image of the Messiah, changed the Israelites. They lied, lied, lied on everything. You can understand where they're coming from. The Christian apologists, they say, we defend the gospel. No, you defend white supremacy, my man. That's what you defend. That's why you're going to get a worse judgment. You brothers and sisters that's following these white folks in that Christianity garbage, you're going to receive a worse judgment. Read on. Uh, Barbanel could particularly say. No, that's all I wanted. And that the fate of the Christians at that time will be far more dreadful than that of the Muslims. That's the Mohammedans. So, woo, read on. Now, let's go back to Romans 9 now. No, go to 2 Thessalonians 2. What time is it? 2 Thessalonians 2. And let's start at verse 9 again. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. Uh, now I'm going to answer the question, why are they going to receive a worse judgment? Read, you know what I want? I want verse 3 and 4, then we're going to jump to why are our brothers and sisters in Christianity going to get a worse judgment? So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, I want verse 3 and 4 right now. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that son and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So, the second coming of Christ will not come except there come a falling away first, meaning that all 12 tribes of Israel had to fall and go into captivity. Now, where are we today? In captivity. We have fallen as a nation, as a people. We have fallen and we can't get up. Then it says, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. The word perdition means hell. That man of sin be revealed the son of hell. That's the so-called white man. That's the descendants of Esau. That's the descendants of Cain. Read. Watch what they do. Go ahead. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Now you wanted to know why the scholars said Christians will receive a worse judgment? Then Muslims, verse 4 again, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So not only does he oppose what is written in the Bible, it's about Christianity. Think about it. Christians oppose what is written. They say, you don't got to keep the commandments. You don't got to keep the day of atonement. You ain't got to do none of that. But you can, you got to keep Christmas. You got to keep Easter and Mother's Day. That's what they do. This, this is why they're going to get a worse judgment. Because they read the truth and they deny the truth. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. All that is worshipped. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God. So what does that part mean? Anytime you go into their church where they say God is. They got images of white people on the wall as God. Just start with the Roman Catholic Church. Start there. They call the Pope uh, the Heavenly Father. That's his title. He is uh, Christ. They call it vicar. Is it vicar is the word? Which means Christ replacement. Let me tell you something about that term, Christ vicar. Um, It's V-I-C-A-R, if I'm not mistaken. Which means Christ replacement. That's the same thing. Listen to what I'm about to say. That is the same thing Antiochus Epiphanes did. When he took the name... Antiochus Epiphanes means God manifest on earth. That's what the Pope, he represents what? God manifest on earth. That's what Christ vicar. Am I, am I saying it right? Somebody Google that thing for me. Is it V-I-C-A-R? I think it's vicar. Is that what it means? I'm shooting from the top. That's what it means. So they're saying that's God manifest on earth. He's God's representative on earth. Then you got Protestants that say, well, that's why we broke off from the, the Catholic Church, because we don't believe that. Oh, no, you don't believe the Pope represents God on earth. Thank you. But you took all the amenities, is that the word? Amen, amenities with you. You took uh, white man Jesus with you. You took uh, words, the Sabbath is the first day of the week with you. You also took Christmas with you. You took the virgin birth with you. You took uh, Easter with you. What else did they do? What else did they, these dumb Christians do? Evil Christians. Yeah. Christ don't have a father. You took all the doctrines from the Catholic Church and you hold it true. I want all you dumb Christian apologists, apologists to understand this thing. So you're going to get a worse judgment. Read verse 4 again. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4. 
who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Anytime you go to their church, they show themselves that they're God. Even the Jehovah Witnesses that say, no, nobody knows what God looked like. Really? Can I look at one of your comic books, please? And you'll see images, paintings of God and Christ and the angels all in their little watchtower magazines. And you got to put them on the spot. Oh, dear, who's these people you got here painted as Caucasians? Oh, 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 oh. See, they got to get cursed out in the spirit, of course. They got to be humiliated in the spirit, of course. Because they push lies to get our people in the midst of, of, of this evil. Okay, jump over. Yes. Yes, can you put that on the screen? Can you read that? The vicar of Christ is a term used in different ways and with different theological connotations throughout history. To the right? To the left? Right there? That one? Or the other one? Go over. That right there? Okay, read that. The original notion of a vicar is an earthly representation of Christ. An earthly representative of Christ. Go ahead. But it's also used in the sense of person acting as a parish priest in place of a real person. The title is now used in Catholicism to refer to the bishops and more specifically was historically used to the Bishop of Rome. The Pope. So Christ, vicar of Christ, that's the same thing Antiochus Epiphanes did. It's the same thing. God manifests on earth. So we're in the time, brothers and sisters. We are in that time. So let's go back to 2 Thessalonians 2 and now jump down verse 8. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. The spirit of the Lord's mouth is the Bible. That's why he must be revealed with the Bible. Not, not our own clever sentences, but let's read what the Bible says. And now it's going to crystal clear point out the white man is that wicked. Hold that. Malachi 1, please. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Well, who is that wicked? Malachi chapter 1. Let's start at verse 1. Who is that wicked? Malachi chapter 1, verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Saith the Lord. Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return, and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. They shall call Esau Edom the border of wickedness. Go ahead. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. And the people, the people, the people, not person. It says the people whom the Lord hath indignation against, righteous hatred forever. You can't change that, brothers and sisters. You can't change it. Back to Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8 once again. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse eight. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Now we know who the wicked is. The Bible has revealed it's Esau. Esau is that wicked. That's why I referenced the book that scholars know Esau is that wicked that God's coming back to destroy. Go ahead. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's the Bible. That's why we got to learn the scriptures, brothers. Learn it. Sisters too. learn this Bible. Learn your book. Go ahead. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's the second coming. He's going to destroy them. Go ahead. Even him Mm. whose coming is after the working of Satan. This goes back to Genesis 4. Remember, before the flood, they were called Cain. After the flood, they're called Esau. Go ahead. With all power. All power. And signs. And signs. And lying wonders. And you've got to examine what nation on earth has all power. That's this white man. He has nuclear power, scientific power. He has the power, and this power he has is a sign and lying wonders. It's a sign of what? That they're the wicked. (laughs) That's what it is. They use use their power to say, our power, our science is a sign that God is working with us. No, it's not God working with them. It's who? Satan. Satan is working with them. 
Yeah, yeah I mean, then look at the nuclear, the, the, uh, look at the scientists behind, behind the nuclear uh, their design. What kind of men they will create some type of things like that that will destroy a waste of people? The wicked. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Read on. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. And, and with all deceit of sin. Right there. You're going to. Next, when y'all write this, um, write this verse in your notebook. Next to the word deceivableness, write deceit. This word deceit is easier than deceivableness. Because you read it, deceivableness. What the hell is that? I can't even pronounce the word. It means deceit. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, next to unrighteousness, right? Sin. With all deceit of sin. That's all it's saying. Go ahead. And them that perish. And them that perish. It's talking about our people now. Watch this. Because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. The Christians, our black brothers and sisters, our Latin brothers and sisters that reject the truth of God, it says... Because they receive not the love of the truth. Give me that in Psalms 119, please. Verse 142. This is what they reject. Not only do they reject the image of Christ, they reject this too. Psalm 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. Christians deny that. They say, no, that's called legalism. You don't have to do anything to get the kingdom. We have the grace of Jesus. What you're talking about, brother, is legalism. So go back to 2 Thessalonians 2 again. And verse 10 says, because they receive not the love of the law, that they might be saved. Y'all see that? Because they receive not the love of the truth. The truth is thy law, that they might be saved. Go ahead. Verse 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Why? What's the strong delusion? That Jesus is white and he loves all people on the planet Earth. And he died and rose on Easter Sunday. He was born on Christmas Day. He doesn't have an earthly father. And your mothers and fathers will die with that in their minds. So, God said, I'm going to send them strong. These are, these, now listen to what I'm about to say now. Them same spirits that rejected Christ when he walked the earth, they're back today. And it's some of your mothers and some of your fathers. I'm not saying all of them, but it's some of them. The same ones that pierced Christ on the cross, he's back today. And guess what? He's against the law. He's against the black Christ. He's against us being the Israelites. Wow. You know, I just thought of somebody's face just popped in my head. Hmm, wow, just went bing. So, the same roles they played back then, they're playing the same roles today. Antagonists. We got to stop these Israelites. Crucify them. It's the same spirits today. Read that again. Verse 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Watch this. That they all might be damned. That they all might be damned. So you read this and go, well, he's cursing. God saying that they all might be damned. Go ahead. Who believe not the truth. Your parents don't believe the truth. Your sons and daughters don't believe the truth. Some of your spouses don't believe the truth. That they all might be damned. Who believe not the truth. Go ahead. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. But had pleasure in, write this down, sin. They had pleasure in breaking God's laws. That's legalism. You ain't got to do that. That's keeping no commandments. You ain't keeping no Passover. Keep Easter, though. You ain't got to keep no winter holiday like uh, uh, a Hanukkah feast of dedication. But cr keep Christmas. Y'all don't see nothing wrong with that. They have substituted. They talk about uh, replacement theology. They are replacement theology. That's, right. That's, right. That's them. That is them. All right. Go to Romans 9.13. We're almost done. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written... Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So even in the New Testament, Paul has to remind us, listen, God hates Esau. Who was Esau at the time of Paul? The Roman Empire. But Paul could not write, God hates the Roman Empire. He could not write it like that. He said, you know what? I've got to use other words. Because Rome had checkpoints and examined and read everything. They checked everything. So they wrote, Paul had to write in code. Okay, and guess guess who delivered his writings? 
A sister named Phoebe. Give me that Romans 16 real quick. Just popped in my mind. Romans 16, I think is the last verse. He, commend, he commended her in verse 1. All right. I want verse... Mm. Yes, he commended her in verse 1, but that's not what I want. Uh, mm. You know what? I got to check. It just popped in my mind. Bear with me a second. Lava talk. Yeah, yeah you would have think the whole thing you went out about the revealing of Esau, he is the seed of the wicked. Our people who heard this class, some of them will get it, some of them will not get it. Why? Because you, you, the, you the spirit that hate Christ. Right. I found it. I don't know if your Bible got it. It's verse 27, but you know they got a little caption under it where it tells you, you got it? Read that. Romans chapter 16, verse 27. To God only wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Written to the Romans from Corinthians and sent by Phoebe, servant of the church at Centria. So this sister, she was putting her life on the line. She said, I'm going to make sure the, these epistles get to the churches where they're supposed to go. So she obviously had freedom. She was freeborn, was able to do those travels and had the money to do so. That's why Paul said in verse, uh, same chapter, verse 1 and 2, read again. Verse 1 and 2 now. Romans chapter 16, verse 1. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at, which is at Centria, that ye receive her in the Lord, as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she hath been a succor of many, and of myself also. Succor means comforter. Comforter of many and of myself also. So she risked her life. That's some faith right there to make sure that the letters that Paul wrote got to where they were supposed to be. Okay? From there, give me 1 John 3 and 10, please. This is what Deacon Malachi was bringing up earlier. 1 John 3 and 10. 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil... Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Neither he that loveth not his brother. So if you're walking around with hatred in your heart, your mind, your soul for your brother, you're of the devil. This is why Holus, John 8, 44, this is why Christ said this to the Pharisees. And the Pharisees were Israelites. They were not Edomites, they were Israelites. Read. John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father, the devil. He said to the Pharisees, and I'm you of your father, the devil. Go ahead. And the lust of your father, you will do. The lust of your, meaning the desire of your father, you will do. Go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning. So what is he saying? You're walking in the footsteps of Cain. Go ahead. And abode not in the truth. Just like Cain did not abide in the truth. If the, Remember, if thou doest well, will you not be accepted? So likewise, Christ said to the scribes and Pharisees, you're doing just like Cain. Go ahead. Because there is no truth in him. There was no truth in Cain. Likewise with you, scribes and Pharisees. Was that the whole verse? No, sir. Go ahead. When he speaketh a lie. Mm -hmm. Remember he, he said, I don't know what my brother is. How do I know? Am I my brother's keeper? So he says, when he speaketh a lie. He speaketh of his own. He speaks of his own. Go ahead. For he is a liar and the father of it. Mm. So Christ got on them black. Pharisees, just like today. Go back to 1 John 3. So it's the same thing. You'll see Israelite camps that'll sit around and do videos. Look at the purple faggots. I hurt them. I hate those purple. I wish they die. I wish this happened. They'll do videos saying, we're going to talk about uh, Joy Morgan and let's pray for the destruction of the Israel, of Israel united in Christ. That's Cain. That is the spirit of Cain. That is the spirit of Esau. It is the same spirit. Even those who are quietly acting behind the scenes. Oh, you want to destroy IUIC? I'm going to send you some money for your court defense. I'm going to send you some money and help you. That's the spirit of Cain. They will be judged and they will be destroyed. Every last one of them. But on our part, we can't roll like that. We can't have the spirit of Cain, the spirit of Esau on us for any of our brothers. Even those that call us names. Now, we might get pissed off. Christ said... Be angry, but what? Sin not. sin not. So it's okay to be mad. Okay, but he said, don't sin. Don't step out on that. Let's go back to 1 John 3. 
Verse 10. Yep. First John chapter three, verse 10. And this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Mm -hmm. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. That's right. Neither he that loveth not his brother. He that, it says, who, he's, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. If you don't keep the commandments, you're not of God. Then he says, neither he that loveth not his brother. Why does he say it like that? <laughs> yeah, no. Because remember that during the time of the scribes and the Pharisees, they was keeping the commandments. But they had hatred in their heart for Christ and his followers. We. What, you want to say something, Yeah, yeah, read that verse. Read that verse. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Because righteousness is telling us that to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Mm -hmm. So when you watch on YouTube, you see all these hatred. God already tell you these men is not dealing in the spirit of Christ. Because y'all guys, you are dealing in your spirit of your emotion and feeling. You jump after these men. Because they never use righteousness. Because the righteousness of God says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Read them. Verse 11. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Mm -hmm. Not as Cain, who was that wicked one. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, of Satan. That's why I said, remember, and go back to, the, uh, not Thessalonians, Genesis 4. I forgot the verse where it says, unto you sin lieth at the door. Verse 7. Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire. See that? And thou shalt rule over him. So now people often ask, how do you know that that's talking about Satan? 1 John 3 and 12. 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. Not as Cain. Who was of that wicked one. Not as Cain who was of that wicked one. Now watch this. I'm going to tie it in again. Go now to Thessalonians about Esau. Second Thessalonians 2. I forgot the verse. Even him. Verse 9. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Remember when this was written Cain's seed was destroyed off the earth. With the flood, Cain was no more. That spirit came back as Esau. Same Satan is still dealing with that soul, that race of men and women. Back to 1 John 3 and 12 again. 1 John chapter 3 verse 12. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew him, hmm. Because his own works were evil. Because his own works, he was, he killed his brother because his own works was evil. He was jealous and envious. He didn't want to obey the Lord's commandments. That's the same thing. I want you to notice. People say, how is IUIC the way it is? Because we try our best to be obedient. That's what we try to do. If you even listen to our teachings, we come among, we try to be obedient. But then you have other camps, other groups, other Israelite congregations who sit back and watch and are filled with hatred. I hate those niggas. I wish they'd die in a purple and gold everywhere. I can't stand them. I can't hear you on the mic. Put on the mic, please. I was saying, remember, one, one brother said, I wish a bomb would go off in their congregation. Right, right. Another dude, fat Jamaican dude, said, I wish somebody should go into the school and kill up everybody. Shoot them up. Shoot up everybody. Y'all remember that? Well, I do. I don't forget that stuff. Now, where were we at? Verse 12 again. Yes, sir. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. That's that spirit of envy. That spirit of hatred is envy. They're doing what God says, and we don't want to do what God says, so I can't stand them. That's what happened with Cain and Abel. That's what happened with Jacob and Esau. Read. Verse 13. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. So we shouldn't be shocked. We being the truth, like, why we get all this hate? Where is it coming from? The Bible says, Marvel not. Don't be shocked if the world hates you. You come into this truth, you want the kingdom, there's a price to pay. You're not gonna, you're not gonna walk through what, what I always get that expression wrong. What is it? You're not gonna tip to, tiptoe through the tulips into the kingdom. You're gonna hold that Matthew 24. I think it's, it's either verse 9 or 10. 
Well, Christ said, you shall be hated of all nations. So I don't know what Bible you're reading. You want to be loved by everybody. It's not going to happen. Matthew chapter 24, verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. How many nations? All nations. You shall be hated of all nations. We shall be hated of all nations. So that's why when you get people like T.D. Jakes and Creflo and people just love, oh, I just love them. Motivational speakers and prosperity teachings. Because if they true, if they teach the true gospel, they will be hated. Why? Because the true gospel is about deliverance of the 12 tribes of Israel from captivity and world domination. That's right. That's what it's about. Yeah, when the nation heard that, they despise it. Mm -hmm. They say, no, they're not, that's not these people. Right. That's why they say there shall be hate uh, for all nations going to hate us when we bring out the true gospel up. Exactly. Back to 1 John 3, please. Verse 13 again. First John chapter 3, verse 13. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. Mm -hmm. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Mm. So when you see Israelite camps teaching of hatred for their brothers, to hatred for us, they're abiding in death. God is not dealing with them. I don't care how many, listen, listen what I'm about to say. I don't care how many precepts they can pull, how quick they can pull it. And it's, 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 wow, they tore Esau up. That's fine. When, when I came up, all we knew was the white man is the devil. But when we got asked questions like, hey, how do I mend things with my neighbor? We would be like, uh, and the next powerful brother will come. Because we weren't learning that. We weren't learning that. We were learning condemn the white, that's it. Now, that's a part, that's Second Thessalonians. I'm not saying that part is wrong, but I'm saying there's more to it than that. How to mend the nation, how to bring families back together. We didn't learn none of that. That came way later with time and, and struggle and pain. Read that again. Verse John chapter 3, verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Read. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Go ahead. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Now, I want to say something about murder. Find me the precept that just popped in my mind in Peter about let none of you suffer. Is it Corinthians? Peter? Find me that one, please. Find me that. I do want to say this, just in case. First Peter chapter four, verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. Read it again. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. If any of you men or women suffer as a murderer, guess what? We're not going to have your back. We cannot support murderers. Don't write us about it. Don't ask us to send your commissary. It's not happening. If you, and I'm a stipulation, if you are a murderer, when we're talking about presumptuous murder, I'll put it like that. If you are a, per, is that right? Can I say it like that? Yeah, because sometimes if it's self-defense, somebody, that's, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you presumptuously go to murder your brother or sister. Like what happened in, London, we're not supporting that. We condemn that. Understand that. Read it again. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief. Or, if you, or as a thief. Go ahead. Or as an evildoer. Mm-hmm. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. Mm-hmm. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian. And again, the word Christian means anointed. People like to break it down. Oh, it means follower of Christ. Okay, but it literally, Christ literally means anointed. The only anointed people are the Israelites. It's not the Chinese. It's not the white man. It's the Israelites. Go ahead. Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Right. So now go back to 1 John 3. I just wanted to bring that out about murder. 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Matthew 5, 21. Christ 
alluded on this. He spoke on this thing about murder. Stems from the spirit of hate. The act of murder stems from the spirit of hatred. Read that. Matthew chapter 5 verse 21. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, Uh and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Now that law, thou shalt not kill. Remember, earlier today we went over the statutes regarding, because there's different scenarios. We went over it. You have the the presumptuous murderer who lies in wait to murder his brother or sister, and you have the one that does it accidentally. Okay, so there are different scenarios. So read that again. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. Mm -hmm. And whosoever shall kill shall be in a a danger of the judgment. Wait, 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 did it say in a danger? In danger of the judgment. Read it right, please. Read it again. My fault, sir. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Mm -hmm. Read. But I say unto you. Now you know what people go, oh, I never kill nobody. That don't apply to me. Read on. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Now, that's the same thing John elaborated on in 1 John 3, 15. That's what we just read. But what I want you to notice what Christ said. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother, here comes, without a cause. Without a cause. So he's talking about a particular type. He's talking about you have hatred for your brother and your brother or sister. They didn't do nothing to you. Y'all understand that? Because guess what? There is reasons for you to hate your brother. To be angry with your brother. I'm going to give you an example. Give me, I think it's Proverbs 6. Around 36 about, somebody help me. I want the law that in Proverbs Solomon talked about. Adultery. About no ransom. There's no ransom you can give. Where is it? Yeah, 35. 35, that one. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 35. Start up above. Yeah. 34. 34. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Wait, wait, wait. Where are you at? 24? 34? 34, Uh, 34, sir. Uh, Start at 32. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get. Now, a wound and dishonor. You know where the wound's coming from? Somebody going to bust you upside your head. That's where the wound's coming from. And dishonor. Because now your name's going around town. Read. And his reproach shall not be wiped away. People ain't going to forget that thing either. Read. For jealousy is the rage of a man. So now he's going to explain the wound. Go ahead. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. What kind of scripture can you give this brother? Brother, you know the scripture says, thou shalt not kill. Somebody move this nigga out of my way. Because I'm going to put that one over there to death. This is what the scripture is saying. Solomon, the wisest man, is telling you how it's going to go down. It ain't going to be no, look, brother, here's a scripture. Read that again. Verse 34. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom. Here's a thousand dollars, brother. Here's ten thousand dollars. I don't give a damn about your money. You destroyed my family, nigga. 35 again. He will what? He will not regard any ransom. Neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. You can't content this brother. So he's he's like, you know, there's some spirits you can't do nothing with. When, I, when they get that, uh, that rage on them for what you did to their family, they coming for you. Go back to Matthew 5. So I just wanted to show you that in regards to what Christ said about without a cause. Matthew chapter 5 verse 22. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Mm-hmm. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Rekah shall be in danger of the council. Right, that's name-calling insults. You hate your brother out of, uh, it's this constant insults. And it's done with a spirit of hatred. It says, shall be in danger of the council. That's when you take men and women like that to council, right? But whosoever shall say, thou fool, 
shall be in danger of hell fire. Now, thou fool and rakaz, almost the same thing, virtually the same thing. What it's saying is that person never took the correction of the counsel. They kept the hatred going. Go ahead. Verse 23. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there, and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee. You remember. You want to bring your gift to the altar. Okay. It's like that gift at this time, like when you read Leviticus 6, you, they would bring a trespass offering. Christ says, you leave that gift there, your trespass offering. Go ahead. Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. Right, because the trespass offering, go to Leviticus 6 so you understand what I'm talking about. Go back to the law that Christ is referencing. Is it Leviticus 6? I just threw it out there. Six and one through five. Thank you. Leviticus chapter six, verse one. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul sin and commit a trespass against the Lord and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep. So, for example, I say, Nehemiah, hold my cell phone for me for a couple of days. It says, and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep. Go ahead. Or in fellowship. Or in fellowship. Go ahead. Or in a thing taken away by violence. He gives another example. Or if you take my cell phone by violence. That's like robbery. That's an act of violence. Robbery. Go ahead. Or have deceived his neighbor. Or you lied about it. Go ahead. Or have found that which was lost. I lost my cell phone. You found my cell phone. Go ahead. And lieth concerning it. And you lie. Hey, did you find my phone? No, bro. I didn't find it. We had an issue like that a couple of, was it a year before last? About a cell phone that was, uh, you know, mysteriously lost and found. Or have found that which was lost. Go ahead. And lieth concerning it. And you tell a lie about it. And swear falsely. I swear. I swear I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. In any of all these that a man doeth mm -hmm. sinning therein. Go ahead. Because you're sinning therein. Go ahead. Then it shall be because he has sinned. And is guilty that he shall restore that which he took violently away, mm -hmm. or the thing which he hath deceitfully gotten, mm -hmm. or that which was delivered him to keep, mm -hmm. or the lost thing which he found. Notice he's given all these various what ifs or scenarios of things that occur. Go ahead. Or all that about which he hath sworn falsely, he shall even restore it in the principle. And shall add the fifth part more thereto. So whatever the price, for example, the cell phone is, you got to add five parts to it, to the price of it. Go ahead. And give it unto him to whom it appertaineth mm -hmm. in the day of his trespass offering. See that? In the day of his trespass offering. Go ahead. Verse 6. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord. So once you did all that, then it says, bring your trespass offering unto the Lord. Why? What was the trespass offering was about? Lord, forgive me of the trespass I committed against my neighbor. Accept this gift, this ram, this goat, this bull. Read that verse again. Verse 6. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord. A ram without blemish out of the flock with thy estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest. So you had to bring a ram without blemish. So now Moses said before you give that trespass offering, you want forgiveness? You got to make amends with your brother. If you stole something from him through violence, you lied to him concerning something, or you deceitfully hid it from him, you got to pay the price of it and restore the fifth part. Then you bring your trespass offering. That's the same thing Christ was saying in Matthew 5. But you notice Christ said again, your brother, before you go put mm -hmm. that thing there. That's why, brother, that's why I think Deacon Malachi had a class about that. Right. I mean, brother would just say, oh, I apologize, forgive me. No, you got to go to that man. That man you speak evil of. Mm -hmm. Go to that man first. Before right. you can pilot, before you can come and talk about, oh, God forgive. No, you got to go and get in the brother first. That's right. <laughs> you don't just say, oh, I apologize. No. The Bible say get in your brother first. Exactly. Go back to Matthew 5. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter. So I'm showing you Christ stayed in the law. Yep. That's why. Now give me that one in Isaiah. He said he will magnify the law and make it honorable. Yep. Isaiah 55. 42? Thank you. Yeah. 
People talk about grace. Christ didn't teach. This is why they run the letters of Paul. I don't want the words of Christ because he talked about the law too much. Give me Paul. Because Paul wrote things hard to be understood. I can manipulate you in the writings of Paul. That's a Christian mindset. Read where we at. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 21. Read. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Christ is the righteousness of God. Go ahead. He will magnify the law. He will magnify the law. And make it honorable. And make it honorable. Make it honorable. That's what here at IUIC, that's what we're trying to do. Are we 100%? No. But we're trying to fight through all the struggles and pain to get there. Go back to Matthew 5 and 23, please. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar. Remember what the gift was, a ram. A ram. Go ahead. And there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee. What was the ought? You did something to him. You offended him, whether through robbery or stealing or lying. You trespassed against him. Go ahead. Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother. See that? First be reconciled. Do you know what that word reconcile? Hey, and Alicia, can you look up reconcile for us? Well, that's a big word. That's not a normal Negro word. Reconcile? What do you mean by that? Reconciled. And it's word, the word reconcile is used in um, 1 Corinthians 7 a lot. Uh, Romans, where's also you? Romans 11 is used. Can you put it on the screen? Read reconcile. Reconcile. Restore friendly relations between. You see that? Restore friendly relations between. For example, when it says, let her, the wife, remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. Restore friendly relations between. When God said he would reconcile the children of Israel, restore friendly friendly relations between. Between. See, Christians go, Christ reconciled everybody. Wait a minute. It said restore friendly relations. Restore meaning you had a relationship before. When did God have a relationship, a friendly relationship with Esau or the Philistines or the Moabites or the Hittites? I never read that in the Bible. So there is no reconciliation between God and the other nations. Okay. Go back to Matthew 5 now. Verse 24 again. Matthew chapter 5, verse 24. Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. So it's not, listen to what I'm about to say. This is what some brothers and some sisters do. Uh, can, uh, forgive me if I offended you. Mm-hmm. And walk up. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. To reconcile means to restore friendly relations. You got to win your brother, win your sister. Do y'all understand that? It's not, I stole from Deacon Malachi. Hey, Deke, forgive me. I'm sorry, man. And I'm, no. Deke, I'm sorry. You tell me what I can do to make this right. We was good. I want to make that friendship good again. That brotherhood. We got to build this thing and make it right. You got to make sure he or she is comfortable. Y'all understand that? That's what reconcile. Restore friendly relations. I hope y'all understand that. Watch this. Hey, give me Wikipedia on the Congolese before we close out. Wikipedia, Wikipedia, Wikipedia. Uh, can you read that for us, Nechemiah? Con- con- In the 2000 U.S. Census, 3,886 people of Congolese descent were reported. Another 1,602 specified that they were descended from people from Zaire, and less than 300 people indicated that they hailed from the Republic of Congo. Stop right there. Go down, raise it up, uh, Elisha. Let me see something. Uh, Start right there in history. Watch this. Like other Central West African groups in the United States, the first Congolese arrived as enslaved people to what is now the United States of America. So the first Congolese arrived as enslaved people to what is now the United States of America. Go ahead. During the transatlantic slave trade, coming at least from the current Democratic Republic of the Congo, Congolese were imported to places such as Louisiana and South Carolina. So they were imported to such places such as Louisiana and South Carolina. Uh, Alicia, go to the books. I want you to see this. So the Congolese was taken to the United States, Louisiana and South Carolina. I want, yes, click that book right there. Put it on the screen. 
A tribute for the Negro. Go to the next page. Uh, James W.C. Pennington, Frederick Douglass, Alexander Cromwell. Uh, I want, where's the year? Raise it up. Where's the year that this book was printed? You see a year in there? I must have cut it off when I took a snapshot. Anyway, this is old. Old, old. Go inside the book. Give me the next page. Go to the bottom. Yeah, raise it up. All I want is the underlying that you might, a remarkable. A remarkable fact. What? I'm sorry. Oh, the bottom says 1775. Y'all see it at the bottom? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. A remarkable fact in the history of Luango in the empire of of Congo is that the country, according to a statement which was fully credited by Oldendorp, himself a writer of most correct judgment and of an unimpeachable veracity, contains many Jews settled in it. Mm -hmm. So many Jews settled where? In the Congo. Next page. Blow it up big. I want that. Alicia, what are you doing? Right there, make it big on the screen. Who, who retain their religious rights and the distinct habits which keep them isolated from other nations. Though thus separate from the African population, they are black and resemble the other Negroes in every respect as to physical character. It is probably in allusion to this case that Pennington in his textbook says, the descendants of a colony of Jews originally from Judea settled on the coast of Africa are black. So... You see what the scholars are saying, that the people in the Congo are Israelites. And they were taken to Louisiana and South Carolina. So Esau, they, they know what's going on. They know who we are. Don't let nobody deceive you. The Jews are black. black. <laughs> That's right. Give me Matthew 3, 8, before we, as we're about to close out, please. Matthew 3, 8 through 10. Matthew chapter 3, verse 8. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. So the word meat, it means right or good or answerable to amendments of life. Bring forth, therefore, works, meat or good for repentance. Go ahead. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. So I want to pause there because many times there are Israelites popping up all over the place. They know that they're Israel. But all they're doing is saying, I'm good as long as I know I'm Israel. But that's not good enough for God. That's why John the Baptist says, bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. You gotta, your works must prove you've repented. Notice the word, it says, bring forth therefore fruits. Hold that, Nehemiah. Give me that in Galatians 5, is it 19? The fruits we got to bring forth. I just want to show you something. It's not good enough just to say that we are Israelites. It's not. Because that's what the Pharisees and them was doing. We Abraham, Abraham's our father. We good. We right. We dead. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love. But the fruit of the spirit. The first fruit of the spirit is love. And give me the precept for that please. Either 1 John 5 or 3 or 2 John verse 6. One, one or the other. Love. 1 John chapter 5 verse 3. Mm -hmm. For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. So the first fruit of the spirit we got to bring forth is obedience to the commandments. That's the first thing Christianity has missed the boat on. They don't understand. The apologetics, the urban apologetics, they have missed the boat on that. Back, read. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Mm -hmm. So love is the first fruit of the spirit, which is keeping God's commandments. Read. Joy. Now, coupled with that, keeping the commandments, you got to have the joy of the Lord in your heart. Give me that Nehemiah 8.10 real quick. Why I got to have joy? Joy is very important in this truth. Nehemiah chapter 8. Is that the right verse? The bottom part. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. The bottom part. All right. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. Then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. That's loving your neighbors. You love yourself. Go ahead. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry. Neither be you sorry. Don't be sad. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So when you're walking around with that depressed spirit, you're always fighting with your spouse. You got to try to get that joy back in that relationship. I don't know how to do it. 
Only you can do it. And I always tell people, everybody's spouse is different. All we can do is give, show you scriptures, but it's up to you, men and women, to apply that or, and figure out a way to bring that joy back. Go back to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Mm-hmm. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, mm-hmm. joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. There's no law that you could pull on somebody who's keeping the commandments, who has joy, peace, gentleness, meekness. What law can you pull on them? What law are they breaking? So that's what Paul, that's all he's saying. He said against people like that, there's no law against that. There's no law you can pull to condemn that. Like the Christians do. Oh, oh you, you're keeping the commandments? That's a sin. That's a, you're, 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 you're against God. You're rejecting Christ. So, shut up. Back to Matthew 3 and 8, please. Matthew chapter 3, verse 8. Mm-hmm. Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Mm-hmm. And now also the axe is laid upon unto the root of the tree. So if you don't want to bring forth the fruits meet for repentance... If you just want to say you're good because you're Abraham's seed, he's saying think again. Read that part again. Verse 10. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit. Meaning the fruit of the spirit. You don't want to bring forth the commandments. You want to bring forth joy, peace, meekness, long suffering. You don't have the fruits of the spirit. Go ahead. It's hewn down. You are cut down. And cast into the fire. And cast into the lake of fire. And with that, brothers and sisters, we say shalom.